Hey guys, Josh here to let you know Interbrews has a Patreon page. Yes, yes, we do. And uh, for as little as a dollar an episode, you too can help support this show to get the word out about all the awesome beers from the Houston area and beyond. And also all the awesome people involved in the Houston and uh, greater Texas uh, craft beer industry. Like today's episode with uh, Chris and Caleb and Bianca at Backfish, which uh, we had to do a little bit of a turn uh, simply because of this uh, this storm, but we'll get into all that on the show. But anyway, your chance to uh, help support the show uh, right there on Patreon, patreon.com slash interbruce. And uh, we appreciate any support that you can or want or, you know, don't give. You know, your earballs on this uh, promo right now, that means a lot too. So uh, thanks for listening. Now uh, on to Backfish with Chris, Caleb, and Bianca. The following is a presentation of Stewed Productions. This is Interbrews. All right, everybody, welcome to Interbrews. It's been a couple of weeks since I I put out a show, and uh, we had one scheduled today with uh, Bianca. They say hi, Bianca. Hi. (laughs) Chris and Caleb down at Backfish in Pearland. And uh, guys, I didn't even know until last night, late. Apparently, there's a tropical storm or something. That's, that's a rumor. Uh, we got a, a little bit of rainfall around here. Did, how is it? Are you, are you everybody okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Uh, kids are off school, so mom's home with them today. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> We're not building it. Uh, Caleb, you're a little muffled, so if you can like lean up, like get real close to Chris, maybe even sit in his lap. Uh, so you both... <laughs> so maybe... you already wanted. <laughs> oh well, then uh, I don't know. There's no video. <laughs> yeah, quit. Uh, quit nuzzling into his into his neck. Then I guess is whatever. But uh, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, backfish brewing uh, in Pearland, guys. Uh, you've got a got a big event coming up. We wanted to talk about and Caleb. Now that you're you're there. It's kind of a, a historic thing. Caleb making his uh, epic return to Interbrews. And uh, so um, how did we get to where we're at? So, well, you know what? First of all, let's go ahead out of the gate. We'll talk about it now and then before we end the podcast. But uh, what's the you have a big beer release coming up. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, we're uh, partnering up with uh, the Autobahn Society. Houston, Autobahn. Yeah, the Houston Autobahn. We're partnering up with the Houston Audubon. We did a collaboration beer with them. Um, it'll be released this Saturday at 3 p.m. It's called Pelican. Um, it's a pale ale um, made with the Falconer's Flight Hops. Mm. Um, and I'll take it from there if you want to talk about it more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell me more about yeah, it's that. A, the, the beer is a, it's a session IPA. It's um, with Falconer's Flight uh, Hops. Kind of going with the bird theme on that one the uh see we dry hopped it with like just a massive amount i think we did what uh three pounds per barrel or something crazy yeah and it's a it's a it's a great beer and it'll be released uh what saturday and then wide throughout houston that week after the board around the town okay well how did uh how did the uh collaboration come about or chris are you a big they actually approached us about it um I guess they were just shopping breweries, and uh, we were the first one to say yes. And so, <laughs> y'all weren't out. Yeah. You weren't. You weren't out. We, we've been wanting to do something like this with you know an organization, uh, like a conservation organization, mm-hmm. and um, just it was just the right timing. Okay, so y'all weren't out birding on a random like Tuesday, and they saw y'all. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. When do y'all normally bird? Is that a thing? Y'all, y'all go bird? Is that? That's just every morning. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to uh, bird during traffic. <laughs> the, uh, the old two finger salute. Yes. <laughs> we actually just found out that um, where we're located in Pearland is actually uh, has like a bird sanctuary here. Um, so the CVB actually has joined in uh, sponsoring this event and um, they had a uh, really nice coasters made up for us. Um, and then the Houston Audubon Society, we have uh, had special edition pint glasses made up. Mm. Uh, the first 50 people to order uh, and purchase 
Pelican will receive a pint glass. Okay, that's cool. Mark that down. Note to self. Get the glass. Um, okay, so tell me about okay Falconer's Flight. Obviously, the uh, the name for the hop makes a lot of sense. But tell me about the hop itself. What uh, what flavors and things like that? What do, what can we expect from the beer itself? Yeah. Uh, so the the Falconer's Flight is actually a, a hop blend uh, that one of the Northwest hop providers makes together. Uh, this one happens to be called uh, the version which uses seven of the sea hops in it. Uh, I know Cascade, Centennial, Columbus, Citra, Cluster. Remember what the other two are? That's like the Santa Claus <laughs> reindeer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nook, uh, I have no idea what the last one is. I can't think of it. So. It's all the sea hops. Yep. So it's, a, it's a, a blend. Yes. yes. It's a proprietary blend they put together. Oh. Well, what are, so like, is there like, is the ratio all the same or do they add a little bit more of this or do you know, or. And they don't really release that. It's yeah. proprietary. Yeah. Oh, that you can get the notes in there. You know, I definitely get some of the cascade and the centennial, you know, some of the more prominent hops um, yeah. definitely shine through there real nice. Um, mm-hmm. It's got this kind of blend of, you know, piney tropical fruit thing. That's, you know, it's it, real pleasant. You know, they take, you know, a lot of brewers, you know, us included, typically throw two, three hops in a beer um, you know, when we're blending an IPA or something like that. So this kind of takes the, the – They're already blending yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing the work for us. <laughs> uh, and so for an IPA, you're using it for uh, – I don't know how many different – are you dry dry hopping, did you say? Or is it uh, – using it for all three, like bittering and flavoring and aroma and all – is it like every level of hopping you're using the the blend? Uh, you know, we, we bittered with our, uh, with our, we, we use Magnum and pretty much bitter everything because mm-hmm. it's a clean bittering hop. And then Falconer's Flight went in at the end of the boil, kind of going after that, you know, juicier, you know, flavorful instead of bitter uh, IPA. Person. And uh, then we just dry hop the hell out of it. What is the um, brewer's like actual uh, measurement for dry hop the hell out of something? Is it? Do you have to meet a certain threshold? What is the? I think anytime you get over two uh, pounds per barrel, that's pretty much considered uh, <laughs> dry hop the hell out. Okay, so you can find that in like the Encyclopedia <laughs> Brewing. Yeah, it's a it's a brewing term. <laughs> <laughs> from uh from way back, like in the olden days, and you you shall goeth forth and dry hoppeth the hell out of it. Yes. So say if you'll find that in brewers logs in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, that, I always love, uh, I love a good, I mean, I love IPA. Who doesn't love IPAs? I don't know. Everybody loves IPAs. Um, and, a good and this IPA. one's an easy drinker too, because it's only at five and a half percent. Oh, see, that would have been a perfect at the brewery at 10 AM doing a, a podcast in the middle of a hurricane. IPA. <laughs> I've, got your, I've got your pint sitting right here. Ah. Oh. Guys, let's seriously. I I was so excited about coming down to see you guys in this stupid storm. <sighs> My heart's a little broken right now, but but it's not. You know, this is a great event, and everybody loves. You know, we want to raise money to to help the birds and and try delicious beer and the Audubon Society and everything, and that's a fantastic thing. But you'll have other events, so we'll have another excuse for me to come down. Uh, I'll, yeah. Uh, Anything, anything in the future coming up past, past this event? Uh, you know, obviously your, your tap room is open, uh, all the time, but, uh, you know, anything else you've got coming up in the future that you know about currently? We have something big, uh, in the works, uh, that'll be coming out in the next few weeks. Hmm. Like, uh, but I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, so that's called a tease. Yeah, you got to keep those lips <laughs> tight on that one. Okay. Uh, is there a general time for which this possible awesome epic thing could be happening, like in the, before the end of the year ish? Is that? Oh yeah, like next month. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right then. So there you go. Um, well, let's mark our calendars. Let let's let's go ahead and schedule in an actual visit when this dumb storm gets passed. I'm going to come down and hang out and we'll talk about it. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, happy birthday, by the way. Oh, yes. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll have birthday drinks. 
<laughs> Thanks. Anna. <laughs> yeah, please go ahead. Uh, chug one for me. Um, yeah, I'm 39 today, so still in my 30s. That's my mantra for the uh, the rest of the year. Still in my 30s. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll hang on to that as long as we possibly can. I'll hang on to that because the hairline's going. I think my hearing may be gone. Maybe I put my uh, mic- uh, my headphones up too high. I don't know because I'm just always asking people what, and that's it's kind of my catchphrase now. But anyway, I digress. Um, Caleb, yes, sir. Uh, you're at Backfish now. I am. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I've been here since May. Yeah, it's, it's been it, fun. Yeah, time has flown. I, yeah, exactly. I wanted to get down there right away, and now we're in, or almost in October, and, and uh, we're just now chatting it up. So, um, how's it been? What do you, you know? I know you were talking about doing a lot of, uh, you know, experimental stuff and all that kind of. You were just super excited about you and Chris working together and then just being there, and and you know, you you could see the giddiness in your face as you were explaining it all. So, uh, you know, tell us about your time so far at Backfish and what's been going oh, it's on. Been great. It's an awesome work atmosphere. Great coworkers. We're totally normal. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I get I get to have fun and uh, brew a lot of small batches for the tap room, um, which is awesome. And then I get to come up and drink beer in the tap room with the people trying the beer every day. You know, it's not something I used to get to do. Yeah, what uh, what have you been brewing up there for tap room only kind of stuff? I mean, we uh, run the gamut of uh, right now there's a German Hefeweizen on tap. Um, that's a small batch. I've done some Gozas, um, some Porters and stuff. We've got a little barrel project going. So, yeah. ESB just kicked the other day. So. Oh, yeah. We've got a Nitro tap now. We've been running an ESB through that. We've got a Milk Stout coming out in about two weeks. Mm. Uh, that's going to run on that. And just, just playing around and having fun. Trying to make good beer. Yeah. How uh, how big is that pilot system? It's only a barrel. Okay. So anytime you see us post that uh, something's on tap, yeah. kind of want to hurry up and get here. So it, it doesn't tend to stick around long. So a, a barrel translates. So if we're doing into ke- that's two half barrel kegs. That's that's high level math for me. Half of- <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, about, so- it's about 30 gallons. Okay. Okay, which translates to uh, about three hundred pints. Two hundred and you're making me math way too early. <laughs> well, well, yeah, okay. So it's a um, if you and uh, thirty of your closest friends all go to the tap room, you can each have ten. <laughs> so, or you know, sixty of your closest friends. There's enough for everybody to have five, <laughs> right? So. Um, yeah, that, that, those all go by pretty quick. What, um, of the things that you've been able to brew so far, what, uh, what have, what are some of the highlights for you personally that you, you know, getting to sit around and drink with people in tap room, what have you been most proud of or happiest with, or. I don't know. I kind of, um, backfish has never really had, um, any sours on top. Mm. And so that's been kind of fun to see how they react to, uh, the gozas I've released. Uh, about two weeks ago, we released a um, was it a, a pear and ginger? Ginger pear. Yeah, yeah. Mm. goes to that went like awesome. It didn't last the weekend, mm. and uh, yeah, just bringing some new stuff to the tap room. You know, on top of our mainstays. Yeah, yeah. Chris, has there been anything that uh you know kind of put a little pep in your step when you try? I mean, is there any like styles that you know you're trying like all yeah. right, here we go? Yeah, um, you know, Caleb kind of pushed me outside of my comfort zone as far as stuff goes on that stuff. This um, is very true. <laughs> this is very true. Um, I've always been very, you know, traditional, that kind of thing. And you know, he's wanted to do this salted watermelon goza thing. And I'm like, all right. You know, I've always been leery of bringing uh, bacteria into the brew house because, you know, you hear all these horror stories and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So um, you know, I was like, all right, you know, you've been doing this. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, kind of gave him the reins and let kind of run. So I keep catching him peeking around the corner at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, like what kind of bugs are you bringing in here? Um. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Caleb, just to add to that, but Caleb has been great. I love having him here. He's creative, smart. Um, 
you know, he's very experimental. So yeah. I like all those things. Cause like Chris said, been very traditional and, um, which I think is a great thing because everybody wants to know that you can do those traditional styles, but you can also, you know, get trendy and creative with it. Yes. And I don't, you know, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you guys are in the middle of it working in a brewery every day, but from somebody who's a professional beer drinker, I guess is what I am mostly. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, I, I waver back and forth. Sometimes I'm like, I just want something traditional. I want a Pilsner. I want a Porter. I want, you know, something in that mm -hmm. vein. And I'm like, that's just what I want. I want to pair it with some, this type of food and that's my mood today. And then sometimes I'm like, I want to try something that I've never had before. And then it may be something like a, you know, a goza, a salted watermelon goza or something, or it may be, you know, some, you know, I don't know. Yeah, we actually, we have something unique on tap right now. We have a white chocolate blonde. That's been doing really well. Did you, a white chocolate blonde? Yes. Yep. All right, take me through that. How does one make a white chocolate blonde? It's a, uh, a blonde ale that um, we use um, chocolate in. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, I mean, it just has like this awesome, some people would call it like M&M &M in a glass, like M&M's and blonde or something, or six, those uh, little six, six lits or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's really caught on, especially with like the darker beer drinkers. They yeah. like that, you know, chocolatey, roasty flavor, and that uh, yeah. chocolate really comes through on that blonde. Hmm. But it didn't pick up any of the uh, the color, right? Which is cool. Yeah, yeah. That's um, I mean, I've heard of the uh, like a a white stout before. I, I don't know if that was like a trend for about I don't know four minutes at one point. <laughs> uh, but I guess that's kind of in the same same vein, right? As far as do you close yeah, your eyes? It, it, it does. If you didn't, uh, if you didn't see that blonde beer, you would think you were drinking like a stout or something like that, and not like the he not heavy like that. But you just get that chocolate, and you don't see that many blonde beers. Yeah, no, that's true. Absolutely, well, that's cool. Um, yeah, I, you know, yeah, I wish I'd set up like a uh, a like a, a white chocolate blonde cam and get people's like <laughs> I want to see I want to see people's facial expressions you know when they try that beer that's one of those beers we can try for the first time it kind of blows your mind that's a oh, good yeah. idea actually hmm. it would be All like right. those old Folgers uh commercials we've switched their normal blonde beer with a blonde chocolate <laughs> blonde beer <laughs> watch their reaction as they try and then <laughs> you remember those old commercials from just me <laughs> from like 1984 yeah. I don't know. You're 39. I know, yeah. right? That's that dates me a bit. <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> um, anyway, Google, like YouTube, go on YouTube and watch those commercials. It's that's that's anyway. <laughs> Folders, and then like the wife would always get mad because it's like he never had, you know, normally has a second cup of coffee when we're at home, and so she's all worried about it. No. Anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, um, well, in that same vein, what else, like? Caleb, what else could you do? Uh, there's a, a white chocolate blonde. Could you do like a, um, could you flip that on its head and do a, like a, like a dark Pilsner? <laughs> I don't think that works that way. Oh. <laughs> no, I think a Pilsner just has to be Pilsner. Oh. Schwartz beer at that point? Yeah, that's a Schwartz. <laughs> okay. I guess so. Is You're there to another category at that point? What about like a chocolate Hefeweizen? Chocolate Hefeweizen. Yeah. That could work um, yeah, if you, thing, yeah, yeah, if you got the banana to come through, mm -hmm. chocolate, and chocolate covered banana, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Thank you know. for feeding us these ideas, by the way. Yeah. No, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess it would work, right? Yeah. It'd be kind of like a Dunkelweizen, right? Sort of, maybe, or a. I guess without the color, right? Yeah. Exactly. Or a, yeah, yeah. What's the other one? What's the uh, what's the big one? Not Dunkelweizen, but beyond that, the bigger one. The uh, Weizenbach. Yeah, Weizenbach. That's what I'm saying. Yes, thank you, Chris. Excellent. That's a it's a <laughs> it's a style you don't see quite as often as uh, I don't know that you ever saw it that often, but I haven't seen it in a while. But maybe it's kind of in that same vein. I don't know. Maybe not as big though. It usually has big alcohol, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I don't know. Just a thing to think about. Well, um, 
what else has been going on? I mean, obviously, you know, experimental beers and tap room only stuff. That's just super exciting and um, makes me wish I lived in Pearland. Um, and this is where I tell everybody listening, not in the Pearland area, if you're getting down there, uh, you know, make sure you visit Backfish when you're in the pair, make it a point. Um, if you're like me and you, you know, you have kids that do all kinds of sporting events or whatever, always map that out. Pro tip, map, map, oh, yeah. <laughs> map out the kids events, find the breweries around and, uh, you know, that's how you, that's how you make the trip. Houston now. Yes. That's yes. Houston has become very doable for that. Um, you know, it's we're it's a, it's an embarrassment of, of beer riches. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, it's uh seriously though. I was just on Reddit this morning and somebody was saying, uh, Hey, coming to Houston, what do y'all recommend? I'm like, well, that's a, it's a very open ended question. One, where are you going to be at geographically? Cause Houston is <laughs> Houston's huge, but anywhere you are, you know, like if you're in, if you're south of town, you know, obviously you guys are there. Saloon doors, not far, you know, Valensons, you guys are all right there together. If you've, yep. went, you know, further down, you know, it's just, it's a really good time to be a beer fan in Houston and uh, everybody's making really good beers. Yeah. Um, but enough about them back to backfish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually I was going to say, um, in the spring, um, last year, and we were planning on doing it again uh, for 2020, but um, we actually held a music festival called Music to My Beers Fest, um, and it's a festival that actually highlights all the breweries south of Houston. Mm. South of the Beltway. So, south yeah. of the Beltway. <laughs> oh, I like it. Where, uh, where yeah. it, did you have it at Backfish? No, we had it in, um, in Pearland at the Pearland Town Center over by 288. Okay. So we had like Bow there. We had uh, the Devil in the Deep, Fetching mm-hmm. uh, Lab, Lab, Brigadoon, Brigadoon yeah. uh, Texas Leaguer, yeah. TBR was there. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That was fun to do. yeah. Mm-hmm. So are you, and that's definitely happening again, or is that? Yep. It's definitely happening again. We already have it in the books. <laughs> okay. What's the, do you know the date for that? You said spring, right? Uh, um, it's in May. Uh, I don't have my calendar right in front of me. <laughs> you can't have to do anything without my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll post that. But it'll next. be a thing. Yeah, let's. That sounds like ooh. I'm gonna have to mark my that. I'm marking my calendar. I'm gonna find out, and then that sounds like one I want to. I need to be at for sure. Yeah. That just sounds like a party. Um, yeah. Ah, yeah. Absolutely. What's not to like? Um. All right. Well. Um. What else do we need to talk about? What, uh, obviously, you guys, you, you know, you're stuck, you're canning, your, your beers are in cans. Uh, I'm looking at the website now. Uh, is it still the same lineup with one, two, three, f- the four? Oh, wait. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the staple four, uh, yeah. delicious beers, your all y'all, golden ale, your double IPA, Defying Gravity. I tell you what is I tell you what's uh, year round. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad y'all are doing that year round because one, that's a delicious beer. Two, it gets too hot all year round to not have that style available, and that's a a fantastic version of that. And then, and I'm not sure if you're aware, um, but we actually branched out into San Antonio last year. Um, you know, we have. I think I did see something, but go ahead, please go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was just going to say we're uh, distributing their cans and kegs. Um, so San Antonio and the surrounding areas. Okay. Well, that's awesome. How, um, how is that? I mean, it's um, San Antonio, uh, you know, its own market different than, than Houston. How has it been managing those two things? We've had challenges, but um, it's been good. Our sales guy over there, he kills it. So, um, it's great. It's definitely a different market than it is mm-hmm. here in Houston for sure. Yeah. It's, it's a one, that's one thing I love about Texas, but it's also probably one of the biggest challenges is that it's, it is different. Each place you go, like Austin and San Antonio are very different from each other and they're both very different from Houston. And then, you know, someplace like Dallas, which I mean, if you have to go to Dallas, <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's Why would you need to go to Oklahoma? <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. 
yeah, Oklahoma South. I don't, eh. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, okay. Well, so yeah, San Antonio. I know we have people listening right now. And, well, as uh, you know, as they're driving around in their, you know, cars listening to this podcast, uh, Backfish Brewing beer available right now in San Antonio. So uh, anywhere finer beers are sold. Um. What are y'all in? Like, uh, what do they have there? We have uh, specs and total wine here. Do they have the same out in San Antonio? Uh, they have some, another one out there. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Okay. Well, if people live uh, in San Antonio, they know. Yeah. They know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Where so, all finer beers are found. <laughs> yes, where all finer beers are found, uh, you will find backfish, the finest. Among the fine beers. Um, all right, uh, okay, so we're steady moving into fall. I have to ask. We're, uh, you know, in, for the last seven weeks, all the pumpkin stuff has been out <laughs> at my local HEB. Uh, it started yeah. as soon as it, you know, was still, you know, dropped below 100 degrees for whatever reason they decided to throw out pumpkin stuff. Um, yep. y'all's, y'all's views of pumpkin beer. Will, we, will Backfish do... A pumpkin beer, is it? Actually, just discussed that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely want to do uh, something small batch wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, tap room, but eh, I really don't On think big scale. I don't. I don't, think I don't know if the demands there anymore. Yeah, it's kind of uh, well. Plus, everyone's doing so many, mm-hmm. and they're putting them out so early. Yeah, you get, people are getting kind of burnt out on them. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely that. It's like people. I think. I think people want to be excited about it, but then I don't know. I don't know what that is. Like there are some pumpkin beers that I love, but then I find myself even being mad at myself for, you know, ordering them in August or whatever, you know, it's, yeah. and you're a pumpkin lover. I am. I'm actually, I have an unhealthy obsession with pumpkin. Probably people. Are you, are you growing pumpkins again this year? Not on purpose. I, um, it's the weirdest <laughs> thing. A few years ago, my, my nephew was out back carving a pumpkin and he thought it would be hilarious to throw a bunch of them up in the air. So now if I don't mow every single week, I get pumpkin plants that pop up. So, uh, That's awesome. Yeah. You got, you got your own pumpkin patch. I know. Right. They, um, pumpkins are funny. Like I, maybe that should tell us something about the proliferation of pumpkin beers. Maybe it's just something to do with like the innate nature of pumpkins. Uh, I was driving behind my local H E B and they had, I guess drop some pumpkins by the dumpster and I drove by a couple weeks later and they had these full pumpkin vines growing right outside the dumpster. I was like, Oh, garbage pumpkins. Interesting. I wonder what kind of, (laughs) (laughs) I wonder what kind of flavors those will have. (laughs) So (laughs) hopefully it doesn't uh, have flavors that tear off. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I mean, they'll literally grow anywhere. So I don't, maybe that's the problem. Maybe, Maybe they just they glom onto everything, and maybe it's it's not the pumpkin. Maybe there's like a like the spirit of pumpkin like gets into everything, and you can't shake yeah. it. It's like a virus. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse will have nothing to do with zombies. It'll be just people drinking you know pumpkin spice lattes all day. And uh, I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out this the zombie apocalypse smells great. <laughs> <laughs> the, end of the, the end of the world <laughs> smells like uh, a country store. Anyway, I don't know. Um, Death in pumpkin spice. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, if you're going to do a small batch in the tap room, what uh, how, what's the approach? I don't know. I gotta. I'm still thinking it through on what style because there's so many ways you can go about doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, We're going to call it basic. <laughs> <laughs> They, like, you know, like we said, we were just we were just like throwing around the idea yesterday. yesterday. So, yeah, I'm. As far as it's gotten so far, and that's the nice thing about the tap room is we can actually be you know in the proper season with stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it's like okay, if we brew it next week, it'll be ready in October. Yes, you know, and and actually release it when I think it should be released, not when I have to release it to <laughs> not get the market stuck with it, kind of thing. So. Yeah. You have to release your stuff in the summer, your winter stuff yeah. in the fall. Yes, yeah. that's so true. That's so true. I, it's almost, yeah, it almost makes more sense to do just the the seasonals and the even like yeah. the ultra seasonals in in just the tap room. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I dig and it. Plus, we've got a great homebrew store in the area. Mm-hmm. And so if, I, if there's something that we all of a sudden, oh, man, let's do that right now. All we got to do is run Zip down the street yep. and get it. The stuff. <laughs> what? What is the name of that homebrew store? Uh, Hop and Grape is the one we use. Okay. Hop and Grape. Uh, are they... Right next to the uh, beers looking at you. Okay. Hop and Grape. There you go. Yeah, uh, that's good. It's good to know that there's uh, homebrew stores, you know, not just great breweries, but also homebrew stores in, in well, in most general areas of the, of the city. Oh, yeah. So, good stuff. Um, I think the Hopper just expanded. So oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to know because, you know, we had uh, Scott decided to close up. DeFalco's, he decided to retire or whatever, and that's, that's good that they're they're picking up the the mantle and and running with it. So, um, yeah, that's that's good stuff. Because I, I, home brewers home brewers are by nature, I think, just more curious beer drinkers anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, more home brewers, the more people are going to show up at the brewery wanting to mm-hmm. compare notes. Did uh, and and we actually semi-officially started kind of a homebrew club here um it's more of a just you know kind of come and hang out uh, we do it the first monday of every month where everybody just kind of shows up we share some beers we talk about some beers uh, you know just have a good time um it's another thing that helps me you know just kind of learn what's going on out there what they're tapping into right now and you know we've offered them hey you know if you think something crazy let us know we'll put it on our pilot system too so Trying to trying to build that and uh, expand that community as well. Oh, that's cool. Does it have Does a homebrew club have a name? Not yet. <laughs> I'm sure we'll come up with one eventually, and it'll be some terrible acronym for something. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, on the to do yep. list. Come up. I think all the uh, CIA, KGB, all those have been taken. So yeah, I don't know if we have to get something else. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. CIA's taken, FBI. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Caleb, any, I don't know. Caleb, any ideas? I have none for that. Okay. Just any three letters. I even, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, what is the uh, American Medical Association, AMA, the ale making? <laughs> something i don't know anyway i'm sorry we'll we'll leave it to them we'll leave it to them (laughs) all right well um what else uh do we need to discuss what else do we need to promote what else do we the people need to know about backfish i'm not sure when uh, this podcast is going to drop but uh we've got talk like a pirate day coming up tomorrow is that tomorrow yes yeah 19 oh so chris is gonna hate me for this but i don't know if you know but chris is actually a pirate yeah, well, that's that's the rumor going around. Yeah, oh, yeah. It? It's on the underground. <laughs> <laughs> well, the patch. You got to be real tapped into my social media. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, tomorrow's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Okay. And what are y'all doing for that? Anything? Uh, we're just, honestly, we're just being silly about it, but we're uh, we're going to have some fun with it. If you come in, uh, order your beer, talk to the bartender, order your beer, talking like a pirate, and uh, you get happy hour prices. Okay. Perfect. So that'll be a $1 off full pours. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, if they don't talk like a pirate, is there like a plank to walk or a... Yes. Uh, no, but that's actually a great idea. I might think about implementing that. As much as it's raining right now, we might be able to do that. (laughs) Or maybe get like a table and designate it as uh, Davy Jones locker. I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) 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 All right. Murder dinner coming up, right? Yeah, we do have a murder mystery dinner coming up um, October 5th as well. Okay. Uh, People have been asking for us to do that, so uh, uh, we're bringing it back. So everybody needs to sign up. <laughs> okay. By September thirtieth. Okay, yeah. well, I'll, I'll make sure I post this show today. I'll do it. as soon as we are done talking. I will get my fingers moving to to put this episode out. 
Um, okay, so murder we're mystery. <laughs> Wait, say that one more time, Caleb. So sorry, we're making you work on your birthday. No, it's, this is not work. I wanted to be there. This was that's the thing. Like I was so when I had to reschedule again, getting old because my back. <laughs> anyway, I won't even talk about that. But it was to when I, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm, this is going to be great. I want to hang out with everybody at, on on my birthday, and uh, then the stupid, stupid, stupid storm. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. But we'll do it again. We'll uh, we'll we'll be. I'll be down there soon, soon, and uh, maybe we'll just talk like a pirate just for the. Hopefully you can make it out before our next uh, big reveal. Well, uh, when is that? Uh, probably in the next two to three weeks. Oh, um, okay. Well, what do y'all do in the first week of October? Let's do that. Let's just pencil it in. Well, you know what, Bianca, I'll, I'll we'll we'll chat after the show. We'll we'll work all this. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I won't uh, I won't keep you guys much longer. I'll let you uh, get back to making. Uh, chocolate blonde ales and um caleb i'll let you uh continue to to push chris's boundaries and uh you know make him spy around corners and... <laughs> <laughs> um but guys uh stay dry stay high and dry and uh thank you all for spending a few moments with me via the uh the internet and technology that makes it pretty cool that we can chat it up even though even though there's a big storm Yep, and even though we're bad at technology over here. No, nah, it works. It works. And you know what? It, it works so well that, um, you know, you, this got me to thinking. I'm like, there's no reason for me not to do, like, quick shows like this. If y'all have an event, just let me know, and I'll put it out there because people like to hear it straight from the, straight from you guys, you know, like, what's going on. Like, the day of the, you know, or, like, the a couple days before the murder mystery uh, dinner, you know, why not? Yeah, awesome. Definitely keep that in mind. Thank yeah, you. We can absolutely do that for sure. And uh, Caleb, congr- congratulations on being uh, a great brewer and, and ha- working at a great brewery. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Chris, uh, congratulations on hiring Caleb. And, and <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> Bianca, congratulations on uh, surviving work with those two uh, every single day. So uh, <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, uh, guys, thank you so much. Backfish Brewing, everybody in, in Pearland. Um, you know, look for their beers in stores, in cans. They're very bright, and uh, they will catch your eye. So you uh, should be able to see them uh, readily. And uh, get down to that tap room because, uh, like they just discussed, uh, new and exciting things all the time. And if you're not there, you're going to miss it. And uh, you're going to get that, that FOMO, you know? You're going to miss it. So, uh uh, delicious stuff going on at Backfish. So, uh, Caleb, Chris, and Bianca, thank you all so much. Thank, thank you. you. All right. For the guys, uh, my name is Josh. Thanks for listening to uh, a shortened episode of Interbreeze. We'll see you next time. This is Interbreeze. The preceding has been a presentation of Stewed Productions. Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode of Interbrews. If you did, hey, show us some support. Go to our Patreon page, become a uh, Patreon supporter, and uh, there's exclusive interviews and episodes just for you. If you do that, if you've enjoyed the show, get a little more, and help us go on for another seven years. It's been seven years, we want to go on for seven more. I guess, that's a long time, 14 years for a podcast. Has anybody done that? I don't think so. Anyway, show your support if you'd like. We really appreciate it uh, a ton, and uh, exclusive shows. So thank you in advance. And uh, we'll see you next episode of Interbrews. Bruise.